Hi, welcome to State Doc. My name's Sarah and I'm going to give you your video captain's lesson today. We're here at the helm of the boat. To start the boat, you turn the key the first click to the right. Once you hear the beeping, you press the control button on the throttle. After this light goes solid, you're going to turn the key. And you want to watch the RPM gauge to make sure the boat actually starts up because sometimes you can't actually hear the engine. You're always going to want to start and stop your boat from down here. At this point, if you wanted to, you could drive from upstairs. You leave it in neutral here, walk upstairs, and press this button on the throttle upstairs. After that, you have transfer control up there. When you want to come back down here, you leave it in neutral up there, walk down here, make sure this throttle's in neutral, and press this button again. Then when you want to turn the boat off, you turn the key back to the off position. Now on the throttle, you have forward, neutral in the middle, and then reverse. You have five full rotations on the wheel from one side to the other, so to find center you can go all the way to one side and back two and a half rotations to be going straight. You do have 255 gallons of fresh water on the boat. That is City of Jamestown drinking water and that goes to all of your sinks in the bathrooms and the kitchen. Your fresh water pump is right here. You want to leave this flip forward at all times unless you notice you have run out of fresh water, in which case you do want to flip that off so you don't burn the pumps. Your lake water pump is right here. You want to leave this flip forward at all times. Filtered lake water does go to your showers, toilets, and hot tub. However, that does mean that you do not want to take a shower, flush your toilets, or fill your hot tub while your boat's actually in motion because it's going to try and pull water up and it might airlock the pumps. You do have 100 gallons of generator fuel on the boat. That is enough to leave your generator running for your entire trip. However, you do have the option of turning it on and off. To do that, first you flip your main load switches to the off position. After that, you can hold down where it says off. When you want to turn it back on, you leave both of your switches in the off position. Hold up where it says start. Once it starts up, you can turn both your switches back to the gen position. We're here on the back of a state dock house boat. If you notice your generator's running, but you're not getting power to many of your appliances, you may have tripped the breaker on the generator itself. If that occurs, you want to come here to the back of the boat, open up your generator hatch, and flip your main breaker switch back on. Tying up a houseboat properly is essential to a successful houseboat trip. Most houseboaters beach the boat to tie up overnight. The best locations are in a cove and out of high traffic areas, such as the main lake, to avoid wave action from boats passing by. There are thousands of coves and nice areas to tie up. Look for a gradual bank with trees, stumps, or large boulders to tie to. Approach the bank very slowly. Houseboats don't stop very quickly. Once you have made contact with the shore, put the boat in forward to hold the boat against the shore. If the wind begins blowing the boat, steer the boat to compensate. The driver should stay at the helm throughout the tie-up process to keep the boat straight. Ropes should now be run from the rear cleats of the boat at an angle of 30 to 45 degrees to objects on shore. Tie the upwind side first and then cleat off the back.
Once secure, you can turn the steering wheel away from the side that is tied, and that will keep the line tight while you tie the other side. Here are some keys to remember. Always leave a driver at the helm throughout the tie-up process. Never allow a swimmer in the water with the engine running. Approach the bank very slowly. Watch to make sure that ropes in the water cannot become tangled in the prop. Attach tie-up ropes to cleats only. Never tie to a rail as they will not hold. Many of the boats are equipped with Sirius satellite radio. Now you want to take your time changing the channels. Wait for the music in between each one before you go on to the next. You want to be on channel 18 on your marine radio when you're inside the no-wake zone. Once you go outside the no-wake zone, you're going to change it to channel 24. And that's right here on the sticker on the helm so you don't have to remember. 24 is our maintenance channel. If you ever have any problems with the boat, you're going to go ahead and call in on 24 and let us know. First, we'll try and help you over the radio and help you help yourself. However, if we cannot do that, we're going to ask for your coordinates off your GPS. You read those off and we'll know your location so we can send someone out to help you. Then at the end of your trip, when you enter the no-wake zone again, you want to change your radio back to 18, call in then and let us know that you're here. State Doc, this is 901. We are inside the no wake zone. We'll give you all your checkout instructions and have you continue around until you're directly out from the fuel pier. And we'll send a driver out to bring you in. If you're ever confused or lost during your trip, you can match up your coordinates on your GPS to the map that we've provided to find your location on the lake. It is important to have fun on your vacation. However, you do need to remember a couple things to keep everyone safe. Never drive your boat with swimmers in the water. And when you're jumping off the top, make sure you jump off the sides and not the back. <laughs>